What is up everybody, Garrett Franklin here. Welcome back to another video. I know it's been a hot minute since I made a video. Just with everything going on right now, it's this is something I kind of put on the back burner. I had other priorities that took over, so it's been a long time since I made a video. Excited to get back into it. Um, before I do jump back into it though, I do just want to say I hope everybody's keeping safe with everything that's going on. I know how crazy it is out there, so just want to make sure everybody's safe. So with that being said, let's jump into today's video. Today's video is a new little segment I want to try to incorporate into my channel. Don't really know what to call it. Five tip Friday, five minute Friday, something like that. But basically what today's video is, I'm going to give you five tips and try to keep it under five minutes. Just a couple things that I learned along my way in photography and videography, things that I think will help. Just a few tips, tricks here. Um, I'm gonna try to keep up with this, try to do as many of these as I can along the way. The goal is to release one every Friday, so hopefully we can start a trend and continue to do that. Today's the first episode of this video, so let's go ahead and jump into it. try to keep these tips short and to the point don't want them to carry on too long let me be kind of precise and just short and quick just quick little tips uh, future videos I can make longer ones kind of going in more depth about certain things but for these five minute Fridays I just want to make it quick to the point give you a couple ideas and then move on to the next one all right so tip number one these are tips for beginners people who are just getting into photography so just keep that so just keep that in mind for this video so tip number one is lens over camera. What I mean is if you just recently bought a camera, your first camera, or maybe you got another camera, whatever, before you look to upgrade your camera to the next level, let's say you bought a beginning, like a, um, you bought an entry level camera, you're looking to buy something a little bit more high end, maybe something more megapixels, maybe something that has more functions, whatever it is, you're looking to step up to the next level. Before you do that, I highly recommend that you invest in lenses and in some high quality glass first. The reason for it is because you don't want to have a really nice camera with a really crappy lens on it because then you're, not, you're still not going to get the results that you're looking for. I made this mistake myself. I bought a entry level camera, my first camera. This is before I really got into photography, before I really like before I really fully invested into it. Once I started developing a little passion for it, I decided to let's step it up, get another little camera. So I got a higher end camera, but my results from first camera to second camera weren't really that drastic. And I thought maybe, you know, I'll step up and get a bigger camera, a more expensive camera, which is the one I have right here. Which, yes, in terms of functionality and uh, the things I was able to do with this camera definitely helped me but I definitely didn't see a huge image quality change as much as as much as I was hoping. Reason for that is because I still had a crappy lens on the end of this camera. Once I invested into lenses like the Sigma 24 to 72 8, um, the 70 200 Sigma 2 8 I have, once I started getting into higher end lenses, that's when I really saw the difference. You know, you get this depth of field, you get the faster shutter speeds, you get all these extra benefits. Just the quality of glass in general produce such a better image quality. Even with an entry level camera, you're gonna get that great quality with that great lens. So if you're starting out, you're thinking of moving up, I would highly recommend you move up that lens before you move up that camera. And talking about that, that takes us into tip number two, which is learn your camera. So this was another mistake I made. I just went ahead and switched and got a better camera, thinking that that would really change everything when in reality, I really didn't understand what I was doing. I really, the only thing that I really knew how to control was, you know, the, uh, the ISO, the aperture, stuff like that. I guess small things I was able to do, but I didn't really know how to work a camera fully. So I, have, I recommend that even if you're doing it at your house, you don't have to go out to do this. You sit there, turn it on, play with some settings, get a water bottle, take a picture of a water bottle, and just, and just play around the settings, see what different things do, change your lighting situation, take some pictures in the dark, take some, take some pictures in a really bright light, change it up just to, show, like, just to learn how to actually manipulate the camera and get better image quality with the camera that you do have. 
you know, learn how to manipulate that lighting triangle, you know, the ISO, the aperture, the shutter speed. Learn how to manipulate that to get the picture that you want. Every camera, those are the three main things that you need to change with every picture you take. So once you learn those, you learn the concepts, you get your better lenses, that's when you start moving up in your cameras and that's when you're gonna start learning how to take better pictures. And once you learn how to manipulate your settings to get the image that you have pictured in your head. All right, moving on to tip number three. This is shoot raw. So if you don't know what that means, on, in your picture profile settings, you can either shoot, which almost every camera does now, except for maybe some entry level cameras, but you have, can either shoot raw, JPEG, JPEG fine, um, and there's a couple other ones, but raw is what you wanna go to. So what shooting raw will do for you is when you go into post-processing, you're gonna have a bigger file size to manipulate. So when you shoot in JPEG, JPEG is gonna be kind of like a finished product image. It's gonna be very flat, it's not gonna have a lot of detail in it, so you can't really manipulate that as much. That big example I can come up with this, let's say you have a cake, right? So your JPEG file is a store-bought cake and your raw file is a cake mix, right? So with that store-bought cake, you, you're stuck with the flavor, you're kind of stuck with the icing. Yeah, you can, you know, write on it, you can decorate it, maybe some, some sprinkles on it. But overall, that cake is gonna be exactly the shape, the taste, the colors, whatever, that's gonna be, that's the cake. You can't really do much to manipulate that. Versus your raw file over here, which is a packaged cake. You can add coloring, you can change the flavor, change the shape, you can do, you can do whatever you want with this cake because you have such, you're starting from a bigger base versus this is already pre-made, it's already done. You can't manipulate this as much. So that JPEG file will allow you to do a lot more when you're, post at, uh, when you're in post-process. Post so your color changes, your shadows, your highlights, it's gonna retain a lot more information to give you a lot smoother edit once you're, once you're done. So let's move on to tip number four. Tip number four is never delete your photos. This is something that I really wish I would have known before I started photography, before I really got into it. Invest in hard drives, invest in bigger memory cards, whatever you have to do, don't delete your photos. The, not, the one thing that I really wish I had was all my old photos from when I first started photography. Because I love to go back and look to where I started to where I am now in my photography. I mean, I know I've taken pictures, you know, two, three years ago and that just popped. I thought, you know, it looked really good, but they are just awful if I went back and looked at them. I've also taken some half decent shots from when I first started photography, but since I never kept the file, I'm not able to go back and edit it with the editing style that I have now, with the things I've learned in you know, Lightroom and all, and Photoshop and all of that. So I can't go back and edit it because I don't have the actual file. I have it, you know, saved on Instagram or whatever. So don't delete your photos, buy memory cards, buy hard drives, whatever you gotta do. Buy a huge computer with the biggest gigabytes you can find, whatever it is, don't delete your photos. And make sure those photos are raw. All right, and the last thing it has for you guys, tip number five, is just go out and shoot. You're never going to get better at photography if you don't go out and do it yourself. And this is something that kind of took me a little bit to get used to. I've I always wanted to learn it and master it before I went out and did it, which obviously doesn't make any sense. But I was watching YouTube videos, I was playing with the settings in my house, but I never would actually go out and just shoot. We live in a day and age where technology is amazing. We can take thousands and thousands and thousands of photos and delete whatever we want. You know, we're not we don't have film cameras anymore, we don't have a limited number of shots. Just go out and just shoot. Shoot everything you see, everything you like. Take multiple shots of the same thing. It doesn't matter. Just go out and shoot. You'll become better. You'll learn things. You'll know how to manipulate your lighting. You'll be able to move around to get better images. You'll you'll learn so much just by going out and doing it yourself. That's all I have for you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you leave a comment down below if you like this video. Go ahead and like it. That's all I have for you guys today on 5 Minute Friday. Again, thanks for watching. See you next time.